Hello guys and welcome to another Applied Energistics 2 tutorial video. In this one we'll discuss and, uh, and I'll show you two different setups to do auto crafting of processors and uh, doing workload sharing at the same time. So I have this setup on this side and then we have another. It looks simpler but it well it's quite equal. The towers are not as tall, but you can of course expand them uh, to be the same. But I'll go through with A2 and thermal, thermal methods, that means item ducts to the most. Um, so how we can do this in, uh, in various ways. There are pros and cons with both setups and perhaps you can find out, well, the information that you need to make something even better. Now we have a flaw in the second one, I'll discuss it in the end, perhaps you can find a solution to that flaw. Alright, let's get started over here. We have one interface here and then all the way uh, along the row. So this is not a channel efficient way compared to one over there. But if you have channels to spare, this is a pretty simple setup and you can scale it and it's very stable. You have full control. So what we do is that I have printed silicon from one silicon here. If we just craft 10 of them, they will end up in this chest. And then I have an uh, import bus and then lots of storage buses here. They are not formatted, they have some acceleration cards I might have them a bit here and there, perhaps I forgot them in a few places, but acceleration cards just make it faster. So we uh, suck out the silicon and we put them in the inscribers. I have them prepared with the silicon presses and everything. And once they're done, import buses on the right side and a storage bus to the interface. So note now that we have a power connection here and here, so the brown network is standalone with eight channels, and that's because I have a seven inscriber tower and then one storage. And here's the same thing, one import and seven storage. So we can manage without an extra controller uh, for these networks. And performance-wise, that should be sufficient. You can just put acceleration cards in these if you're not happy, but <laughs> it should be enough. But one important detail is that they are going back to the main network. They will end up here. Okay, let's remove those and move on. For the next two setups, I have a mix of item ducts and ME networks. So for example, here we have logic circuit from gold, the gold end up in this chest and we have the signaling servo to extract them just like the import bus did over here. Place them in the inscribers, we have the logic presses prepared and everything. And then this grain network will have import buses on the back side, on the right side, I mean, the right side, and the storage bus over here. Sending the, and the same thing for all of these three. All these circuits are going back to the main network before we go to the last step. And this is important um, uh, and it's actually, it saves us because the flow in that one does not exist in this setup. Okay, so moving on, uh, we have, here's the diamond recipe for engineering circuits. I have only item ducks here. So, same idea, slightly different setups. They, they are very equal in performance. Uh, I think ME networks are slightly faster than these impulse item ducts, but they are still very fast and they most of the time is spent in the inscribers. So once we have all the, uh, the prints, all the circuits uh, and printed silicon, Back in the network, we will get to the processor 
crafting. Okay, now we have nothing in here. So if I order 10 of these, oh, sorry. If we order 10 of these, start, we get silicon over here. We get pure service course over here. And then we have the final step, this recipe sending all these things into this chest. So these are made from printed silicon and printed engineering circuit and so on. Now you could change this to have silicon and diamond, for example. And then from this chest, you send the silicon over here and then diamond over here and then get them back. It's a you can do it. it, it's a little mess, but the risk is that you will end up in the same flow as we have in the second one. With this setup, all three items, all these three, printed silicon and printed circuit and redstone will end up here at the same time. And here I have only two inscribers to do the final processor crafting. Uh, this is because I'm using seven out of eight channels only for these two because we need to insert from the bottom silicon from the left side redstone and from the top side our printed circuits so we need three channels to feed each one compared to just one in that setup uh, in these setups over here so we're quickly use up our eight channels unless we make things more advanced but with three acceleration cards it's actually quite fast one important detail to prevent running into any problems is that i have these prioritized in uh, according to lower first and then upper so all the ones down here they have priority zero uh, actually the opposite so these are zero and these up here, they are one. Same here. So all these three are one, so they will be prioritized before this one. And when we get items here, they will be come here at the same time. So they will be sent up here at the same time. There should be no risk of getting, for example, redstone down here and the other two items up here that uh, I haven't seen that and it shouldn't be a problem in this setup. So production will always work. So let's start a big task. We'll make 10 out of these and we'll make 21 out of these. And we make 23 from these or something like that. Now we can see that we are crafting in all all of these towers and we get everything sent here so we are we're waiting for the gold to come here it will do it in steps and these are working full time and you can see all items show up here at the same time because they will be done in, in uh, they will come here in chunks of three and slowly well not slowly but at least steadily we're getting our items back logic and uh, engineering so this is very stable working well and i will as soon as we have finished the the job they will go over to the other setup otherwise i think i have covered all of it right we have storage bus, retriever, uh, retriever here as well. And uh, these are not configured. Yeah, I think we have covered pretty much everything. With this setup, you can go, of course, much higher. Uh, with this setup, you are limited by channels. If you're not limited, I guess that's fine. But most of the time, these are standing still. Silicon might need a few more than the rest of them if you want to craft all of them at the same time because everyone will want to use the silicon recipe. But right now this is a real bottleneck. Um, so this needs to be expanded into more of them if you want things faster. But then 
channel limitation is uh, the challenge. Okay, so all of these, they finished. Everything is nice and well. So let's jump over to that side. Okay. So as I mentioned, this is a way more channel efficient way to do things. We have only one channel going here. We have these recipes, as I mentioned before, uh, creates engineering processor with silicon, diamond and redstone. So the press will be done inside this crafting network and then they will stay here until they are done and then come back. So let's um, yeah, let's start over here. What happens when we put all our items, silicon, redstone and well, gold, pure series quartz or diamond? Well, they will be sorted accordingly. So this servo will just pull anything out that is in this chest. Here, filtering on pure service. So of course that means that we have the calculation press in here. So here we'll make those. And over here, I guess you can imagine we have a logic here, sorting on gold. And then finally, oops, calculation from diamond or engineering, sorry from diamond. And once they are done with that uh, crafting step, same setup as we had on the, uh, over there with a retriever up here, sucking all the printed circuits back, the silicon, engineering, calculation and so on. Silicon over here for the silicon press sucking everything back in this network coming back to the same chest and when they end up in this chest again we'll suck them right out and of course they will go over here here i filter silicon redstone and then any uh, any circuit that we uh, might need but here comes the flow that we don't have a way to prioritize and uh, we can't really wait for items to get here. So I will show you quickly how to do one, how it looks. With item ducts is its closest first. So you can see the redstone is already here. The other parts are coming. They end up closest first. So this is the closest and this and this. If any of these uh, slots are full, they will send items up here instead. Which means that if we make two of them at the same time, the next set will go up here. But what happens when we make three? Yeah, that is the flow. That means that we will send redstone up here, up here, and they will come. Everything looks perfectly fine. We're getting a circuit and we're doing this. And once we're done, we got the redstone sent over here because it would, couldn't wait. And we have the other two items here. As long as you craft an even number, this isn't a problem. Um, but Yep, it is a flaw. I encourage you to find the solution to this. Perhaps use only one or always uh, set, set your recipes in pairs, for example. Something like that just to prevent this uh, small flaw to, to hook. Because what will happen is that the entire order crafting system will be locked until it's done. So one of these crafting uh, CPUs, well, it will be locked for an eternity, I think, until it's fixed either by you or that you order more and they even out. Anyway, on the right side, as you might have seen, there is no power feed on the back sides, and that's because I have this creative power cell. Of course, you can use regular power. You should. 
and signalum plated item ducts. Here I have only impulse item ducts. Here they are signalum plated. That means we can run redstone from here to all of these inscribers. So the output, they are uh, actually our power transfer as well. And the final part is, well, retriever, as we had over, over here. This is retrieving the circuits, and this is retrieving all the processors. Sending them, sending them back to the network. So now if we craft more, let's make 10 out of each, or 11. That means that we'll probably have one hookup in the end. But now it looks actually quite cool. We get all the items here and they will be automatically sorted and sent from here to all these filtered inputs. Printed circuits coming back. And in the end, when we're making the processors here, they will end up over here. It's a beauty. Uh, I like that you, when you can see items flowing around. Uh, but except for that little flaw, it's a really nice system. Again, you don't have that flow over here because they end up here at the same time. After that crafting step is done, they will send here in uh, one bundle and they will be put here at, well, all three at the same time. Is it done? Almost. Let's just wait for the final 13 to go. Let's see if we have one that will stay here. So if you have any questions or comments about this, if you have improvement suggestions, well, maybe we make another video. You know where to leave them. Join Discord for more good discussions and uh, let's see what we build next. So five more, three more. Thanks for watching. Take care. And it worked well. <laughs> nice. Bye-bye.